right, we've seen some things that go wrong if we try and use infinity le like a number. Let's do some more of them. I think this is fun. It's like, um, it's like when children like building towers up with blocks just in order to knock them down. And this is basically what we're doing. We're going to build up another tower, which is uh, trying to do infinity and knock it down. Crash! Right, so we've tried dividing by zero to get infinity. Let's try manipulating infinity a bit as if it were a number. So let's try adding things to infinity. We've tried dividing by zero. Okay, let's try adding. Addition. Well, okay, let's start um, let's start simply, shall we? Let's try one plus infinity. What do you think that one plus infinity ought to be? Well, it pretty much ought to be infinity, right? I mean, infinity is is infinite. And 1 plus infinity, well, if you add 1 to infinity, not, nothing really different ought to happen. So this really should be infinity. Now, can you see how to knock this particular tower down? Well, let's try taking away infinity from both sides. Take away infinity. From both sides. Now if we take away infinity from the left hand side, it'll just get rid of that infinity, right? So we should just get left with one. And if we take away infinity from the right hand side, that ought to just get rid of that infinity, so we'll end up with zero. Oh look, we've got one equals zero. Again! And of course, we can do that with 2 plus infinity. Because 2 plus infinity would ought to be infinity as well. I mean, 2 is weeny and infinity is enormous. And so 2 plus infinity shouldn't make any difference to the infinity. It's still just going to be infinity. So if we take away infinity from both sides for there, then if we take away infinity from the left-hand side, then we still ought to get 2 because that will just get rid of that infinity. And if we take away infinity from the right-hand side, we'll get zero. So we've got two equals zero, we've got one equals zero, we're going to end up getting everything at equal zero. Let's try doing infinity at infinity. Well, infinity at infinity, let's think about that for a second. If I take infinity and add more infinity, it's just going to be more infinity, right? So now we can take away infinity from both sides. If we take away infinity from the left, this time we'll get infinity. And if we take away infinity from the right, we'll get zero. So now we've got something even worse. We've got the infinity equals zero. What's going on? It's all a complete disaster. Or is it? Maybe this is just what makes infinity so much fun. So let's think about this for a second. I mean, infinity plus infinity being infinity. Hmm. Is that so terrible? I mean, do we know any other numbers that if you add them to themselves, you get back themselves? Well, there is always zero, isn't there? There is always zero add zero equals zero. So zero is a bit special already. Infinity might, maybe infinity is just a kind of special number and you have to be very careful about what you do with it. Let's try, what else could we try? We could try um, multiplication. Let's try some multiplication. Now let's try reasoning about our multiplication a little bit. Because when you first start doing times tables, you don't just memorize what they are, right? You actually say what's two times four. It is two lots of four. And you get four things. And then you get another four things. And then you kind of add them and you count them all up. You want to more by bits than this. And the funny thing about 2 times 4 is that you could have taken 2 lots of 4. Or, of course, you could have taken 4 lots of 2. And one of the 
sort of confusing things about multiplication when you first learn it is that both of these ways give you the same answer. And in the end, that becomes very useful. But when you first do it, it is kind of complicated. And it's the same with division, that if you try and do 8 divided by 4, we start with 8 things. So this is 2 times 4. If we try and do 8 divided by 2, we take 8 things. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, can't count. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And there are two ways you can do division. You can either say, okay, I'm going to split this. I'm going to say, I'm going to divide this into two parts, in which case I can divide it into two parts like this and count how many is in each part. And there are four in each part. But the other way that you can do division is you can say, I'm going to divide it up into twos. So I can say, how many twos are there in this thing? And so I should have really drawn the picture that way up. So let's draw the picture that way up so that the, um, the picture becomes more vivid. So my eight was like that, and I divided it into two. Or I can now divide it into twos. How many twos do I get? So here's a two, here's two, here's two, and here's two. And now I count how many twos I got. One, two, three, four. So I get the same answer both times. But the reasoning was different. So what we're going to do next is we're going to try and reason with infinity instead of trying to make assumptions about it.